we're going to look at a nice number theory problem from the 2007 Korean Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find all positive integers x, y, and z satisfying this equation. So we've got 1 plus 4 to the x plus 4 to the y equals z squared. Before we look at the solution, here are some hints that you might want to think about. So my first hint is to look for obvious values of x, y, and z that would satisfy this equation. So obviously the right hand side of this equation is a perfect square, it's z squared. And then 1 and 4 to the y are both perfect squares. So that means that if this middle thing is just of the right form, then this left hand side can be written as a perfect square binomial. And so that would be what I would call the obvious solutions. And then you want to build some inequalities to show that those obvious solutions are the only solutions. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go, we'll come back with the solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to jump into a solution, starting with the obvious solutions. So given that we know the right hand side is a perfect square, that means this left hand side also has to be a perfect square. Like I said, 1 is 1 squared, and 4 to the y is the same thing as 2 to the y squared. So that really gives us a hint of some factorization of this left-hand side, but we actually need to break it down into cases. So let's maybe look at case number 1, and that would be if y is bigger than or equal to x. Well, let's go ahead and write this 1 plus 4 to the x plus 4 to the y, and like I said, realize that that's the same thing as 1 plus 4 to the x plus 2 to the y squared. And then we can have this hopeful factorization of this given by 1 plus 2 to the y quantity squared. So obviously, this is only going to work for some really special values of x that make you know, these two quantities the same. But definitely, if those two quantities were the same, then we would have this thing was a perfect square. OK, so let's see what we can do to get there. Well, let's multiply this out. So this is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 times 2 to the y plus 4 to the y. So that's just multiplying that out as a binomial. So if we need this to be equal to this, then that means that we need 4 to the x to be the same thing as 2 to the y plus 1, just looking at this right here. But that's a fairly easy exponential equation to solve. Notice that's the same thing as 2 to the 2x equals 2 to the y plus 1. In other words, we have y plus 1 equals 2x, or we have y equals 2x minus 1. And that gave us our first family of solutions. So notice this guy right here would be our z value, which is being squared. Our x value would be free. And then our y value is defined in terms of our x value like this. OK, so in other words, we can write down a set of solutions like this. So we have x is free, y is equal to 2x minus 1, and then z is equal to 1 plus 2 to the y. But notice that's going to be 2 to the 2x minus 1. Great. So that's our first family of solutions. Now we'll get a symmetric family of solutions just by switching y with x. So in other words, switching this component with this component. So here we've got another family of solutions given by 2x minus 1, x comma 1 plus 2 to the 2x minus 1. And so both of these are solutions for all x in the positive integers or the natural numbers like that. Now what we want to show is that these are the only solutions. And we'll do that by building some sort of inequality. OK, so let's do that. So far, we've found two infinite families of solutions to this equation. So one of them are, is of the form a 2a minus 1, 2 to the 2a minus 1 plus 1. And the other one is 2a minus 1, a 2 to the 2a minus 1 plus 1. So this is the same as what we had on the last board, just with the parameter changed a little bit. Now we want to forge some sort of inequality that will prove that these are the only cases. 
So here we're going to start off with the assumption that x is bigger than or equal to y. Now we can start with the left-hand side of our equation, 1 plus 4 to the x plus 4 to the y. Drop two of these terms and see that that is going to be strictly bigger than 4 to the x, given that you know we're taking away two positive numbers. Next, we can realize that 4 to the x is the same thing as 2 to the x quantity squared. So we're kind of making the same observations that we did before, but now in this like language of the inequality. Okay, but now if we've got this object is strictly bigger than this object, then that tells us that 1 plus 4 to the x plus 4 to the y is bigger than or equal to 2 to the x plus 1 squared. So if it's strictly bigger than this square, then it has to be bigger than or equal to the next square. Okay, so that's good to know. So now we can multiply out this right-hand side. So that'll give us 4 to the x plus 2 times 2 to the x plus 1. But now we can use that to form a simpler inequality. So notice this 1 will cancel with this 1. This 4 to the x will cancel with this 4 to the x. And we're left with 4 to the y, which is equal to... 2 to the 2y is going to be bigger than or equal to 2 to the x plus 1. But then since exponential functions like this are increasing, that tells us that 2 to the y is bigger than or equal to x plus 1. Okay, let's maybe put a box around this inequality because this is going to be useful to keep for the next step. Okay, so now we'll approach this from the other side of the equation. So notice that this left-hand side is most definitely odd. That makes this right-hand side odd. But that tells us that z itself is odd. So let's maybe put that down here. We'll note that z is odd. And so that means we can write z as 2 times m plus 1. OK, but that tells us that z squared is 4m squared plus 4m plus 1, like that. Now let's see what that does to our equation. Now our equation looks like this. 1 plus 4 to the x plus 4 to the y equals 4 times m squared plus 4m plus 1. Now we can cancel some stuff. So notice that this 1 will cancel with this 1. Then we can also factor a 4 out of both sides of this equation. So that's going to give us 4 to the x minus 1 plus 4 to the y minus 1 equals m times m plus 1. Okay, then we can do one more thing. So notice that we've assumed that x is bigger than or equal to y. That means we can factor a 4 to the y minus 1 out of the left-hand side of this equation, and that factorization is happening over positive integers. So let's see what that gives us. We'll have 4 to the y minus 1. Then we're going to be left with 4 to the x minus y plus 1 equals m times m plus 1. So next I want to notice that as long as x is not equal to y, and you can check really quickly that x equals y does not give us a solution, we have a pair of relatively prime numbers on the left-hand side as well as a pair of relatively prime numbers on the right-hand side. So what that tells us is that m has to divide 4 to the y minus 1 or m plus 1 is going to divide 4 to the y minus 1. So again, that's because we've got a pair of relatively prime numbers over here and a pair of relatively prime numbers over here. So that divisibility works that way. OK, but now we can change that into just an inequality and see that that tells us that m is going to be less than or equal to 4 to the y minus 1. And now we can insert this inequality, which we have gained, up into this equation and see what we get. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. We'll have 4 to the x minus 1 plus 4 to the y minus 1 must be less than or equal to 4 to the y minus 1 times 4 to the y minus 1 plus 1, like that. Okay. 
But now notice if we were to multiply this four to the y minus one through, we would have like a free four to the y minus one, which we could cancel with this like that. And that ends up giving us the inequality four to the x minus one is less than or equal to four to the two y minus two. But we can do the same kind of thing that we did right here. And after doing the calculation, what we will see is that we'll have two y is less than or equal to x plus one. So on one hand, we have two y is bigger than or equal to x plus one. On the other hand, we have two y is less than or equal to x plus one. So putting these together tells us that two y is equal to x plus one or x is equal to 2y minus 1, which is this case down here. And again, that corresponds to the case when x is bigger than or equal to y. You can do this completely symmetrically for the case when x is less than or equal to y. So what we've shown is that the x and the y coordinates must satisfy this setup that we have over here, which tells us the z coordinate also satisfies this setup. In other words, we have all of our solutions right here. And that's a good place to stop.